The events of the past year are unbelievable, and have driven me to write again my thoughts. No matter how hard I try, the facts are unavoidable. So I'm rolling around in West March with a friend. It's uh, been a part of our guild and our gaming crowd for a while. Does segments on the instance. His name is Hunts the Wind. And we're in adventure mode. And I learned something that I'd never known before. I didn't know this before that day. And I'm not sure how many people know this. And maybe I'm just a giant dummy. He's got his demon hunter. I've got, who did I play? I guess I had my, uh, who did I, I don't know who I was playing. It doesn't matter to the story who I was playing. Crusader, that's who I had out. Because we were both in our 60s at that point. Rolling around, killing stuff, getting drops, nice upgrades, decent gear. And then suddenly we finish the first bounty that we're working on together. And as that ends, I figured he'd just do like I do, which is hit M, open up the map, take another uh, zone someplace on the map that has an exclamation uh, point above it. Or at the very least, go back to town, sell your stuff repair up, and then, you know, again, go out and get more bounties in that area, clear the thing out, go in, get your big reward. Tyrael gives you, gives you something good, walk away. Pretend it all happened the way it was supposed to, right? It's not how it worked. He just kept going, and I didn't say anything. I thought, well, maybe he just doesn't notice the bounties over. It even says over there uh, where the little bounty quest text is normally. Hit M to bring up the map and do other bounties or whatever words are there. But that's essentially the message. I thought, okay, I'll go along with this. We kept rolling, going deeper into into a dungeon, level three or four of somewhere. We were in West March. I don't remember where we were. Doesn't matter. May have been Act One, that area. Oh, that is what it was because uh, Skeleton King was, you know, you keep going lower, you're going to eventually get to him. That's where we ended up. So we kept going. And I just thought, well, all right, it's fine. I don't mind cleaning things out. I'm going to get a, uh, some loot I didn't know was in here. You know, one of the problems with adventure mode is you you sometimes, <laughs> I mean, you're going to miss out on resplendent chests and other things that you just didn't see because when you cleared the the whatever the quest requirements were, killed the guy or wiped out enough dudes or whatever, you are often then faced with, well, I better get out of here and you and you didn't explore everything. And one of the things about Diablo... I've learned is that if you don't turn over every body and break every vase, you're going to miss out on some legendary or you're going to miss out on a butt ton of gold or whatever. So it is kind of nice to do that. And so again, I just kind of followed in his footsteps. Let him lead the way. Let him shoot things. I don't play a DH yet, so I don't really know half of what he's doing, but it's fun to watch. So there's that as well. So we're tooling around. And then all of a sudden, the little quest area goes, but we go down 11 and it goes, Bleh! kill so-and-so or wipe out this many dudes. And I went, wait, what? How's that happening? We have a new thing and we didn't have to go back and go to another place to get it. All right, fine. So we accomplished that goal, whatever it was, kill the guy, get our stuff, hit okay on the big bounty uh, gold reward, says hit M to get out. He keeps going. We're not hitting M to get out. We're not going back to town. We keep going deeper into this dungeon, wiping out everything we find. Get to the bottom of the dungeon. Does it again. I didn't know this happened. And they weren't on the map. So it isn't like we were just running in that. I know you can do that where you like cross a zone, go over a bridge, and now you're in the place where that other thing was happening. This was just deeper in the dungeon. And we kept getting more and more bounties. They weren't showing up. I Well, I shouldn't say this because I don't remember for sure, but I don't think they were being counted toward the five that you work toward per zone to try to get the big reward from Tyrael every time. It was all kind of weird. Speaking of Tyrael real quick, I'm a little tired of all his yapping in adventure mode. We brought this up on the instance this week as well. And I agree that there's not enough going on there. You walk in there and he thanks you for coming again. Has a big thing over his head as if you need to hear him say that one more time. 
Then you go to your stuff. He has the same banter with his buddies. And it's a little short. You're starting to think that Tyrael's not all there. So, here's the good news. According to a blue poster on Blizzard's forums, the official forums for Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, Tyrael's become a wee bit overzealous with sharing his struggles as immortal as of late. We do have some changes planned for an upcoming patch where you should hear his banter less frequently and with greater variety. I wonder if they have to record new stuff or they'll use things they already have. In the meantime, I understand it might be difficult to sympathize with this unfamiliar plight, but because, or maybe cut the guy a little slack, it says, I can only imagine how disconcerting it must suddenly be to have to deal with all your strange mortal needs. That's an official word from Blizzard there on that. Hey everybody, Scott Johnson here, and this is The Diablo Show. The Diablo Show, episode one, season one. If you want to get technical about it, I want to thank everybody who has pre-subscribed to the show. You put us at number one in the gaming category in iTunes, and that made me super happy. Uh, I don't even really have an official episode up, although we will today. Today is Saturday, uh, April 26, 2014. It's a pretty good consensus out there that this is a good day to release a show. We did a little poll. So I feel like that's what we're going to do. A lot of stuff lined up for you today. You'll kind of get the idea how the show is going to work moving forward. As I mentioned in the promo and have in other places, This show is all about uh, Diablo. That's really all it is. Why, you ask? Why, Scott? Why are you doing it? Because I have a passion for this game. And when I have a passion for things, I tend to make shows about them. So this is the latest victim in a long line of things I have passion for. And I think a lot of you are really looking forward to it, at least based on your feedback. So I hope that that's true, and I hope I live up to your expectation. One thing that'll make this a little different than my usual stuff, or a lot of it anyway, is um, it's primarily a, a solo show. Now, that doesn't mean we won't have guests. In fact, we have one today. In fact, we'll probably have one most days. But it's primarily me. I'll keep using the word primarily until you're sick of it. Like Tyrael in town in adventure mode. Repeating it over and over. But that'll be my plan uh, to to mix things up with interviews from devs at Blizzard, uh, authors doing work like books uh, that are coming out or have come out. Very much looking forward to that. I love the lore behind this game. So we're going to be doing a lot of that. And uh, just generally having a good time. There'll also be a lot of contests, prizes, cool stuff. I'm getting something uh, soon. I can't, I, I really don't think I'm supposed to say what it is yet until I get it, but Let's say it's Diablo related. Let's say it's totally amazing. And let's say we're going to give it away. Let's just say that. Like mail it to you kind of stuff. Not digital things. Sometimes those will be true. But this is this is like a big physical thing that you're going to want to want. And your friends are going to all be jealous and hate your guts for having it if you win it. So that's kind of just the up and front about what's going on here. There's a lot more on its way to talk about, to deal with, to discuss. But we'll save ourselves for that. Let's talk about some news. So there is a lot going on in Diablo 3 right now, and it's kind of funny to even say that. I may not mention this very much in the show moving forward, but if you think about it, we're at a weird place for Diablo. Diablo 3 came... It uh, came to a lot of people really loving it, myself included. But most of us, even those most ardent supporters of the game, were frustrated mainly by what the auction house did to the way the game played. Given our experience in previous games like Diablo 3, or Diablo 2 rather, uh, we knew that there could be, we knew there could be problems that would come out of this. There would be issues connected with uh, the way the auction house worked. So to see us all this much time later with the auction house removed with loot 2.0 uh, continuing to be a real revelation for the game, adventure mode and everything else that's happening. It is one of the most tuned experiences I've ever had in gaming. Which is mostly, see I didn't say primarily, you like that? Mostly why I did a show about it or why I want to. Because man, I'm having fun. The hooks are deep in me. Deep. 
There's nothing wrong with all the other Blizzard games. There's nothing wrong with video games in general. But man, right now, Diablo got his horns in my backside. If you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not sure what I mean. Big changes headed our way with 2.0.5. It's a bit of a heads up from the guys in um, on the dev team over there. Big blue post about what's going on. Here's kind of a a synopsis of what's happening. They're looking to make two changes to Herodric caches. The first change is to allow the caches to drop torment-only legendary items. That is a nice idea. Having spent some a, a, a good deal of time hunting down Herodric caches and having, you know, knowing that I can do that moving forward in torment difficulty levels and knowing that I can only get that gear in there is pretty exciting. The second, they say, is to increase the chance that you'll find a legendary item in a Herodric cache, including act specific legendaries like the Royal Ring of Grandeur, based on the torment difficulty. That seems good. They go on to say what this means is that Herodric caches earned in Torment 1 Plus will be able to drop Torment restricted legendary items and caches earned in Torment 2 Plus will have a scaling bonus for dropping legendary items which include those items only found in a cache. No ETA on when we get 2.0.5. That stuff's a big deal. If you're spending a lot of time in what we would like to formally refer to as quote unquote end game in Diablo These are the things that matter most. How about this stuff? They ask the proverbial question, so when do higher torment rift bosses start dropping more blood shards? Because you can't get enough of those, right? Blood shards, man. Some of my best gear were just awesome, lucky blood shard expenditures. This is what they said. Well, since you brought it up, let's talk a little about that. They're kind of talking to themselves. We're also planning on changing Rift Guardians so that they drop more Blood Shards for each level of Torment past the first, i.e. Torment 2+. Does that make sense? If you're on Torment 2 or anything higher, we're talking about more Blood Shards there. For clarity, this means Rift Guardians will drop the same amount of Blood Shards as they currently do in Torment 1, but starting in Torment 2, they will drop additional Blood Shards per each Torment slider tick. This change will arrive at the same time as the Herodric Cash change, which we just talked about. Uh, which is currently scheduled for our next big fix slash balance patch. This is 2.0.5. Also a big deal. And if you are a money grubbing punk and all you're trying to do is save money, let's say you want your gold to go further, farther, further, further, farther, whatever. Take your pick. And you were sitting around previously going, you know, if I had one complaint, It's that when I unsocket a gem, it costs me too much money to do that. Well, I've got news for you. Next time, (laughs) next time you give old uh, covetous Shem a visit, flawless Imperials are being dropped from 150K down to 125K. If those are indeed the gems you're removing. For Royals, which are currently at 250K gold, that will be dropped to 150K. That's a that's a sizable drop for the Royals. And Flawless Royals from 500K, half a million gold, down to 175K. That is more, of, more than a half, half off of what it used to be. Got to wonder where that's for. I mean, I feel like money is so prevalent in this game that I'm not, I'm not having any trouble getting and retaining and spending and having more gold. Every time I spend any big money, I just go, ooh, that cost me $2 million. But then I look at my total, I go, well, I'd probably be okay. And then I'll go out and do some stuff, and then I'll come back and go, oh, I've earned that back already. So I, I, don't, I don't know what has prompted this other than, I don't know, maybe more gears being put in that needs better gems or that uh, players are going to have more opportunity to re-gem, take gems out, put them back in, some, in better gear. I don't know. But that's good, right? Save you some money. That's what we're here for. You know, that's really why I started the show. It's just an attempt to help you guys save gold. Yeah. Uh, Also some big talk about upcoming patches with the devs. So I know some guys over at Shack News, they do an awesome job with all kinds of good game coverage. And they did um, some interviews that uh, yielded some interesting details. And um, 
Some of this was uh, Chronicle on DiabloFans.com, which is where I saw this. And uh, here are some of the things we learned. Seasons, a.k.a. ladders, and tiered rifts. You guys hear about the tiering of rifts? They're, uh, they're, they're basically let you unlock further rifts as you beat one, which become pr- progressively harder. This idea is a good one, especially uh, when I run rifts, it's usually with three of my friends. And the idea that we could um, really max out and go for it is, is pretty exciting. Anyway, these are going to be major features for 2.1. So we are, that would be well past 2.0.5. Well, who knows how far past, but that's, you know, this is on the horizon, I suppose, but not too close. Seasons will have leaderboards and legendary items that drop only within the season's games. So when a season ends, everything transfers to your normal roster of characters. That's kind of interesting. You know, what did ever happen to the PvP plans they had? I'm sure this has been talked to death on other shows, uh, talked about to death, about why that friendly, because like, remember at first, I mean, it wasn't going to be anything you could do competitively too much or be an esport for because uh, the players were just wildly outmatched in terms of balance and and that was what they wanted because they didn't they didn't want the rest of the game to suffer from overbalancing just to accommodate a PVP segment of the game but i so they were you know all talking about that and i don't remember any official word on whether or not that was ever not going to come or was going to come or they're just holding that close to the vest I was watching video today of the 2010 announcement trailer where they kind of did a little walk through with the barbarian and then talked about the witch doctor later they showed a barbarian coming down from an upper level in a, in a like skeleton king area dungeon, right? From an upper level grabbing, you, had to, you could click on it, grabbing a ladder, and then climbing down the ladder to the lower level in this like cool three-step animation where he kind of just grabbed it, slid down, hopped off, and, he, and you, were, you were now on this lower elevation. What happened to that, dude? That seemed cool to me. I mean, maybe it just became a gimmick and it didn't really add to the game. That's probably why they took it out. But I always notice things like that, little things. There's another one where uh, the barbarian has a gap that's created because as he's walking on this path, this this uh, this bridge held up by these these pillars, big chunk of the ground just falls away, Blech, just falls out into the abyss. Right? He's got stuff to kill on the other side, and he's on this side. He's got to get over there. So they showed how one of his abilities with this, you know, his sort of leap ability. And I don't play a barb very much, which you'll learn later in the show is definitely true. Uh, but you'll, you know, he he had this ability where he could just make it over this this thing. And they were making it sound like that was a tra- traversal feature in this game. And then that's it, man. There was nothing else. Like none of, the, none of the other characters got that except, you know, I guess you could say, you know, blink abilities or I'm trying to think anybody else has sort of an escape ability that teleports them other than the wizard. It's called teleport. Anyway, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. But maybe so they probably just scrapped that. But I wonder if the 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 PvP elements seem like a bigger deal. Like those things are small, kind of cosmetic or whatever. But that seemed like a big big deal. And I probably should hunt around and do a little homework and find out what was ultimately said there. But it definitely feels like their dance studio. And wow, you know, just bring it up, say you're going to do it, and then never talk about it again. Weird. And maybe they did. Maybe I don't remember. This could have been a while back and they just came out and straight up said, we're not doing it. So if your emails are already coming in to the Diablo show at gmail.com, that's the Diablo show. That's got a the in front at gmail.com. Then you can tell me that they already did tell me this and it's just wishful thinking on my part that it's still coming. Uh, let's see. These are leaderboards for tiered risks as well as vanity rewards, by the way, that they're talking about for this, uh, the season stuff. The PlayStation 4 version of the game, this is interesting news, will launch with everything up to patch 2.0.4. That's good and bad. That's good because, you. I mean, these two games are never going to be, uh, there's never going to be parity between the two functioning versions. The PC version is always going to have the newer stuff and the other won't. It's just the way it's going to be. Now, they may still patch those things. You may still get, you know, Incremental patches there as well, but I know they're not going to be day and date. And in a lot of cases, they're not going to... Well, in some cases, the PlayStation 3 and 360 versions of Diablo 3, Sans Reaper of Souls, is basically Loot 2.0 because it never had an auction house, right? But it also doesn't have any of this other advanced stuff, and they're not getting an expansion. So this PlayStation 4 version, and presumably Xbox One version, although, has that been officially announced? I don't know. 
that kind of ultimate combined version with the expansion content as well, which means adventure mode and everything else. They're the only ones that are going to get that. The old guys who bought the old console version, you're out of luck. No expansion for you. So it's a little bothersome. I wish there was a little more parity there. I understand why there isn't. But uh, it is interesting to me to do couch co-op and have I played that at BlizzCon. It was fun. So my idea of doing that is it's still I feel strongly that that would be a really cool idea. I just I just know the parody is never going to be there. And if you're waffling as to which version you should get, which one's going to get the most support, get the PC slash Mac version. You know, the computer version is the way to go because that's just where all the love's going to be. It's not all, and it's not entirely Blizzard's fault that it wouldn't happen that way. It's the way these console companies work, the way patches work, the way all this kind of stuff works. And it's different per, I don't know, consoles just, they're just a, a closed, a closed environment that makes this stuff tricky. So that's all. Uh, they do say at the, uh, the, the bottom of this, most of the Diablo three development team is still on board with Reaper of Souls, meaning people that are working every day on this content are still the core Diablo three dev team with obvious changes. I mean, we have different leadership and some other stuff, but I think that's good. It's good. Those guys are, are all there and kind of seeing it to the end. BlizzCon 2014 contests have been announced. Check out the official Diablo site for details, art, cosplay, talent contest, etc. It's all there. Go check, go check those out. I'll be there. Already got a hotel all lined up. Uh, this is all assuming I have tickets <laughs> to go. And if not, then I'll give my hotel to somebody else. But uh, no, I am. Yeah, I should be there. Like I've been last two in a row and don't see any reason why I wouldn't. Very excited to be a little more spread out, focused this year on not just WoW and the things I'm usually into, but also more Diablo. And I feel like things are really on the uptick for Diablo and its and its fans. So look forward to an awesome BlizzCon, I believe. Potentially bad bug for Crusaders out there, though. Check this out. Again, in the forums, quote, a quick heads up, Crusaders, we've identified a bug with iron skin, something I use with my Crusader quite a bit, reflective skin and law of justice. Protect the innocent that can uh, protect the innocent that can occur when these two skills are simultaneously active and may be fatal to your characters. In other words, these two things being active at the same time kill you. We're investigating this further. We strongly recommend you do not use these two skills together while playing in hardcore mode. That's the rub. Who cares if it's with you and your buddies and you're just rolling around on, you know, Torment 1 and you're just going to respawn at the corpse. That doesn't matter. They're talking about you hardcore people. By the way, I'm really looking forward to um, talking to a couple of different people. We'll narrow down who eventually, but I'm going to get somebody in here who plays nothing but hardcore and then talk about why they do that, what they get out of it, and what their long-term prognosis is in a game like this where they do nothing but hardcore one death mode. Diablo play. Very, very curious about that. Uh, but yeah, if you're playing hardcore, do not run those two together or you are in big trouble. That may have already been hot fixed. If not, something's coming soon. So finally here, um, I'm excited about this and I'm looking forward to possibly doing another interview with Mickey. Mickey Nelson over there, Blizzard's one of my favorite people there. He's one of the most humble, nicest guys to talk to but also has so much passion for the lore and the story behind the games these guys make. And he just put out a Kindle single. I don't know if you call it a single. It's just Kindle edition of Diablo 3 Morbid, M-O-R-B-E-D. It's out now. Looking forward to talking to him about that book, but I can't wait to also just get my hands on it and read it. Um, I've really been enjoying the Diablo books. I've been digging into that stuff uh, pretty hardcore including this new short story that's up on the site, The Orphan and the Jeweler, which I'll link in the show notes. I'll link both these in the show notes. So the Amazon thing's up now. You can get it now. It's a buck ninety nine is all. Diablo 3 Morbid by Mickey Nelson. Can't wait to crack that thing open. And then uh, the, Orphan of, uh, the Orphan and the Jeweler, an excellent short story, web only, on the official site. And again, I'll link it. Um, but yeah, good time to be writing cool stories about, about Diablo and filling in some of these story gaps that we don't necessarily get through the game. I'm enjoying that stuff as much as I ever have. All right. That's your news. I'm going to spend time on the show occasionally talking about opinions and having guests on to discuss different aspects of the game. And I had a question. Why are barbarians 
in some people's minds, still the better choice for melee focused players, say, over the Crusader. Crusader came in and said, look, you only got one shield and sword focused brawler dude in this game. So I'm coming in to give you another choice. Everything else is, you got, you know, you have other melee options, but, and everyone's kind of got ranged and in, in melee options anyway, but the big meaty strength plate wearing dudes. Now you got a couple of choices. Well, to answer that question, I turned to my pal, Ralph. Ralph's an old pal. That's why I called him my pal. To talk about what's going on with the Crusader, how it stacks up against the Barbarian, and where he lands on all this stuff, because he's just about the most expert on that stuff as anyone I know playing the game right now. So here it is. Let's give let's give Ralph a call, have a quick conversation, and I'll be right back. Hey, Ralph, what's going on? I'm sitting around waiting for your phone call. Oh, really? Okay, good, because... That's exactly what I was planning on doing, was calling you. Actually, I made you wait a long time. I apologize for that. I hope you're comfortable. hope everything went fine. I, I found things to occupy myself. <laughs> Turns uh, out there's an internet. There is. There. there is one of those. So Ralph is an old pal. He is uh, a good friend of the, of the program, of the network, of the community. He helps run the AIE uh, guild slash gaming community that we, that we have. The world's largest World of Warcraft guild. It's also got uh, hands in every cookie jar, be it Eve or a million other MMOs or other games, Steam stuff, all over the place. And uh, Ralph is no stranger to managing crowds of people. But I also, the reason I called him today is I wanted to talk about how good he is at managing crowds of mobs in Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls. And he does that quite often, at least when I've played with him, with a melee class. And it's usually Barbarian. Now, we played some where you whip your crusader out. It's not a euphemism. Mm -hmm. That's just a way of saying things. Maybe it is a euphemism. I don't want to get into it. (laughs) But Ralph will pull out one of his warriors. Let you run. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And and I was curious as to why I see you use the barbarian a little bit more. And I've also seen you make comments in party chat while we had like four of us in there talking about why. uh, Just little hints as to why maybe you lean toward barbarian. They're the only two real melee classes in the game. Everybody's got some form of melee and some form of, of ranged attack in the game, which oh, is the, great. the monks are going to get mad at you That's saying that. That's true, but they're... All right, let me back it up then. S- shield and sword people, all right? Yeah. Because monks aren't doing that. They can if they want, but they're not really doing that. Um, no, and the uh, the wizards can even use a shield. I've I've had to do that. Just, you know, you get what drops, right? Yeah, you get a sweet stat and you got to carry yeah. It always feels a little weird, but yeah. Um, or when I'm carrying a, a giant two-handed, clearly meant for a barbarian sword or something. <laughs> yep. That's just stupid sometimes when you're rolling around with that. But whatever, the stats are good. It's a legendary. You, you, you take well, what you're Well, we're hitting given. on one of the things here, which I think the gear drives my decision so much. Okay, now that is maybe maybe at the, at the uh, gist of what I want to get to here. Because I first wanted to know, do you have a preference? Now that Blizzard has given you your two mm-hmm. sword-based melee classes... Which of the two do you gravitate toward and why? Let's answer that first, and then we'll get to why. what gear plays a role here. Well, the Crusader was really fun to level up, and that's how I played Act 5. Yeah. And great fun, great solo, really kind of OP. In fact, uh, when I got to 70, I said, I'm going to go back to my Barbarian because he's much more comfortable. You know, I've played him forever. I just really like his play style. And I went back to play him, and he was dying left and right. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I haven't, I leveled up, but I still don't have very many legendary items. So mm-hmm. the Crusader without a bunch of legendary items survives a lot easier than the Barbarian without legendary items. That's interesting. Do you think uh, that's just, um, is that inherent base stats? Is that something else? What is that? I think this, the, the, the abilities you have on a Crusader, if you go through all the passives, every, almost every one of them mentions the word block mm. or like 90% of them. And I think it's a little bit of the Death Knight uh, thing happening where he kind of was brought in as a bit of a hero class. Yeah. So he was a little bit, you'd hear everybody saying how the Crusader is OP yeah. as they were playing it uh, compared to whatever they were playing before. And, uh, but when, you know, once you get up to 70 and you start going to find the good gear, I think everything kind of levels out. But well, right hold on, back, back this yellows, truck up. When yeah. you, you say you did you did Act 5 with that Crusader, then that tells me you you went through Act 1 through 5 because to get to uh, – or did you or did you finish the – well, no, I guess if you did, oh, if you yeah. did Act 5, you had to start from scratch. Um, 
Yeah, so I I did some leveling and stuff to get the Crusader up to set to uh, 60 and then, you know, finish up Act 5. But I, I definitely did sort of jump around. Mm. So, um, you know, since I already had the Barbarian up high, I was able to, you know, bring in, play play the Crusader at, you know, super, not not Torment, but, you know, Expert and Master levels. Sure. And so I kind of just jumped around between me and the folks I play with. We just sort of, whatever anybody was doing that night, that's what I did. Right. And, and got the crusader up to, you know, 70, like really fast. That so. makes sense. So here, but here's, so here's my experience with the crusader. I got him. Oh, I don't know. In the thirties and forties. I've been leveling him purely in adventure mode. I beat the game, uh, in act five with my wizard so that I could go back and, right. and, and that's the only thing I do now is adventure mode. Yeah. Right? That's all like, it really is to do. I mean, there's some farming to be done and some other stuff, but that's primarily my mode of play right now anyway, as well. So, um, and that's really the revelation in this game in terms of why I think Reaper of Souls is so important. That's the reason the show exists, to be honest. Um, it boosted nice. things to a place where I, you know, I'm very comfortable in my Diablo play. But this is the interesting bit. I get to about 30 or 40 with that Crusader and I immediately start to feel like he's underpowered. And I don't know why, except mm-hmm. that when I compare him to my similar leveled um Witch Doctor, the Witch Doctor, I'll tell you who the OP class in the game is. It's the freaking Witch Doctor, dude. So here's what I think everybody says that about whatever class. I think it's uh, I think you can get people saying uh, OP for almost any class. And I here's why I think that. All right. If you happen to get the right piece of gear that augments the abilities that you like to play. And especially if you get one of those that says, like, you know, level requirement reduced by 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are good. Or you know, uh, those, something those specific like uh, where you'll kill everybody if you wear this, and you're a barbarian. That's an ex- it's a <laughs> yes. little hyperbole a, there, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that hardly ever drops. <laughs> um, the, uh, but you'll you'll hit a run where you're just like I I can't be stopped. And the real test is when you run across a group of blues, right? Because yeah. almost everybody can can run through regular mobs. It's when you hit that group of blues and they kind of don't even slow you down and you're still full of your resource at the end of the fight. Yeah, your life barely took a hit and all that. Yeah. That's when you know. But you know what? So you go to master mode, you're cranking through stuff, you get three of your buddies in there, you hit like five or six levels, and then all of a sudden the gameplay isn't as easy anymore. Yeah. And this this is because you outran your gear, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're waiting for the next drop to take right. you to the next i mean I, I remember a very specific moment at about level 68 with the wizard yeah with the wizard when i was struggling i was ready to lower difficulty because i was really having a hard time and this is just an act five and it's okay to do that a notch or two until you get the gear back sure you know? don't, don't have to feel embarrassed. absolutely no one should feel bad for using that thing but i was about to do it decided to stick it out a legendary drop big old uh-huh. Two-handed, I don't know what, with some sweet procs and some other stuff. And you on see it. that big old star on the map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I got that, and my life changed. And now uh-huh. I needed to bump up difficulty. Literally, like f- was oh, about to go down, and now I was like, well, "Wait, get me to torment now," because this thing is so op for yeah. for where I'm at. Take take the difficulty as high as you can stand it. Yeah, always start high, right? Because actually, it, let's yeah. talk about this real quick. What do you think is the thinking behind them not letting people adjust up with difficulty, only adjusting down? Oh, because then you could do this thing where you run through all the level, fight all the blues, fight everything until you get to the end boss, and then bump it up to T6 and just hope you get, you know, dance around lucky. Oh, and, I and see. And kill that boss, right? Or yeah. or finish the uh, bounty, right? Yeah. I hadn't thought where, about that. I mean, I guess you get exploited. The, the I bounty, suppose. the hard part of getting a bounty done is surviving the blues that you hit during the bounty. Right. Right. So it's, it's kind of stopping people from that exploit. Pink lasers. I like to call them. Oh, the lawn. Uh, somebody calls them lawnmowers. Yeah. There's two I like things I don't them. like. I don't like yeah. pink lasers and I really don't like succubus in this, in this game. Succubus used to be that. That was always first on my kill list. Yeah. Anytime there's a fight, there's, there's succubus. I suck your eyes. Yeah, whatever. Um, With their slow motion fire. They're down first, right? Yeah, they're terrible. I hate them. Arcane sentries, though, uh, I don't know what it was. It seemed, and I I actually think they've tweaked something in the RNG on this because it seemed for about five days in a row, we were playing every night, and every single boss, every single group of elites had arcane sentries. Yep. And you feel like you were getting one shot half the time. 
And well, I'm like, well, for the range, this is fine, but I'm playing these melee classes and this is just, and for that one, I'll tell you that one right there is one where the barbarian is a lot better for me because I use charge on my right mouse button Yeah. just to get out of that stuff. Or when the, when the mobs explode after they die yeah. uh-huh, and you yeah. have to get out of there fast, mm-hmm. the little uh, lava pop things, those guys do, they're the yeah. worst. Yeah. But, I hate uh, those. Here, here's why I hate them is purely a. <laughs> a, gr- a greedy reason they'll drop some sweet yellow or, or orange and I all I, I want to get it before i, get, get I know i know that those things were built by somebody at blizzard who's after the, the game has been in play <laughs> testing for a while and they noticed after the boss is dead everybody's running to the middle to get their stuff yeah and yeah. they said i have an idea yeah how about this how about this idea they all run up there and then they die half of them are dead yeah um, and you got to admit that's that's hilarious. It's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, there's I, I'm excited to interview some devs and ask them some of these pointed questions about small things in the game because those fascinate me. The kind you know what? Though, after, that goes into after that, after that five days and when I was bitching to everybody about arcane sentries, yeah, it seemed like we just hit a spate of all of a sudden there weren't any for a while. Yeah, and I was like, wow, these fights are really boring without arcane sentries. Yeah, you think they're hot fixing that stuff out? I don't know. Or in. I think they, I think they might uh, listen to my mic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hear you on Skype freaking out. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put uh, to finish this out. I'm going to put a gun to your head and say, Ralph, you have a choice, and you can only choose for the rest of your life. You're isolated in a room. Your only companion is a copy of Diablo Three: Reaper of Souls, and then whatever sequels come after, we'll give you that. Uh, sequels or, or other expansions or whatever, and patches, of course. Um, and you can only play one of two classes. Nothing else is available to you. No, no wizards, no magic, no, no frogs, nothing. You have to choose between two melee classes. That's the crusader and the barbarian. Which one do you choose? Can I ask if I'm playing with friends or by myself? You are playing. Oh, I can see how this You know what? You know what? I think I'm still going to say the same answer either way. Either way. All right. Yeah, I think I am. So it's, it's the barbarian and this is, um, I have to put a little caveat that this is how I have my currently barbarian and current crusader spec and geared. Yeah. The way I play them. Um, the barbarian is just set up so much more to function. Mine is as a tank and work within a group. And I, I don't even know if you noticed this when we were playing, but my whole deal is to get into the mobs fast, get them all gathered up around me and stunned. Yeah. And then move out of the group. Mm hmm. And hit him with five seismic slams. Yes, which is always fun to watch. And I love that thing. So that's, uh, and then, you know, all the little dudes are dead and we just sort of have to clean up the rest. Mm. With the Crusader, uh, I tend to hit with a couple of range things first and do a couple things and then I'll move into it. Or um, or I'll be saving that falling sword ability right. for a really big wham when, when, when they're all together. Do love that. Well, it's great, but the most embarrassing thing is when you hit and the mobs have moved and you're just hitting empty space. <laughs> um, you're kind of like, oh, nobody saw that, right? Do you do the rune with the dudes that poop out? The uh, the Rise My Brothers or whatever it is? The I have uh, the one that does the swirling flurry of Oh, that one's all right, swords. too. Yeah, that one's yeah. okay. That one's so okay. Um, so with, the, with the Barbarian, I feel like I can function as a tank a lot better. I can control the crowd. I can put the mobs in a position to die easy when I'm with other people. Um, and I have that furious charge to get me out of stuff. Unless it's walls, I can get out of almost any you know bad situation right. with, the, with the charge. That's interesting. So you've, you, and obviously when you play, like I'll do this all the time where I'll be a wizard in a group with another wizard and I'll be, I'll sort of marvel at why my stuff is so different than their stuff. Like yeah. what, why, why do they think like those a, three things are good? And I don't think like those are good class. at all. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. That to me is one of the great powers of the game. And it's something well, you don't think about until you play with other people and you realize, well, they're just as viable as me, but they've sure found a play style that fits mm-hmm. them. And I like this other thing cause I'm really into, I don't know, having a, uh, you know, this particular thing out or be able to blow this thing at the last second or have this short turnaround on all my cooldowns or, or whatever, whatever my play style is still viable. That's a real nice change from, it's almost like a different class. Yeah, you're, I agree. At. I agree. I, I don't, so I don't do the min max stuff. I didn't even really do it in wow because I, I didn't play a lot of DPS classes, right? But so my strategy for Diablo to have fun is first of all, I have my razor Naga, mouse which is i i have the hex one yeah 
you know what this one looks like? I do. I've seen it. Those six buttons, it, this mouse was built for Diablo. That's, I was going to say, they've, they've got you mapped everywhere you want to be on that thing. Exactly. It's perfect. The right number of stuff. Everything's just right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I have to do with my left hand is the shift button to stand still and the Q to drink a potion. <laughs> you you um, are one immobile dude right now with, with Diablo. You're just flicking a few fingers and yeah. someone needs to come push you off your chair once in a while. <laughs> and... Uh, then I play the character, you're going up through the levels, and at some point you open up some ability that is just the funnest thing ever. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I'm using. So when, when I get gear that matches that, gives like 12% more damage to that, I keep that gear. Yeah. Then I stack, uh, I stack life on hit and I stack resistances. And I try to, and then besides that, try and gear for as much damage as I can, especially if it boosts the, the fun things that I want to do. Right. And then that's it. I don't do any min maxing unless I find that I'm like dying a ton or killing really slow. But yeah, that's a good. I like it. It's a good plan. I like that your goals are uh, 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 team oriented. I like that your the tank in you has not died. Yeah, you understand what it means to corral, to control, to crowd, to do what you got to do to make it so others in the team can get off what they need to do to sort of maximize overall effectiveness. Uh, having sort of seen that in a few riffs with you, I, you, I can, I can speak to it. So I think that's a really, it's a really good thing for a game. That a lot of people just straight up play solo. It's good to see that those, those tenants are alive and well and in, in the way you play. Yeah. Because if you're playing with a wizard, you know that they can slice through a room if you can just keep the things off of them. Yeah. They're just squishy. So, you know, keep stuff off. I mean, I, I, yeah, that's absolutely true. And by the way, wizards, if you don't like, uh, if you don't like those succubus ladies, uh, just yeah. throw up that time bubble and you're good. So in Diablo 2, the character that I played all the time, yeah. swept through everything, Sorceress. Oh, wow. Really? I know. Go for, that's, that's not me uh, at all. Not right? you at all. No, no. Uh, but I just loved it. I did the lightning and the cold. Yeah. And I would just enter the door to a room and I would just fill up that whole room with electricity. <laughs> and the mobs would kind of just fade away and... Now that I think back on it, it's actually kind of a boring way to play. Mm -hmm. it, you just felt good because you're just, you know, you're just so awesome, yeah. everything's dying. Yeah. yeah. I could have used some of that with my necromancer yeah. back in the day. I, I'm i specking my wizard kind of like that, and it's okay, but I definitely have more fun with the barbarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I, I just feel like the melee stuff deserve, deserves some uh, additional conversation, and I was curious as to why somebody would go that way over, say, the fresh, new, shiny class that Blizzard has just released. And and you've made some compelling points. There's a lot to like. What do you what do you do on your crusader? Like I was talking about the fun ability. Like on my barbarian, it's seismic slam. For me, it's bringing out all my buddies. So it's the the the, the uh, flanks thing is the the arrow dudes, the the archers, and I bring those out. They're uh -huh. cooldowns like nine seconds. It's awesome. So I have the it. I have the one with the horses. Yeah, horses is good. The, th the reason I like the the horses is just kind of a one shot though. It's like brrr, and they slam into something and then you're on cooldown. But you can go. But you can go boom, boom, boom. It's you not, can. You not. can keep them going. That's oh, that's true. They're yeah. not on cooldown at all. They're not right? on cooldown. They're just uh, um, wrath. Their wrath suck for sure though. Yeah. Um, I don't use. I, I don't know why they didn't appeal to me, but I like the arrow guys. They ca they cause a ton of focus damage when you pop those, especially on single I might, targets. I might have to try them. Yeah. Maybe I like them better. I like I them a lot. Them. But I also like. The uh, this heavenly sword deal. What is it? Oh, heavenly sword. Fall, falling sword. Falling sword. Yeah. Heavenly sword yeah. is a different video game altogether. It's um, like um, 10x damage. Yeah, yeah, that thing's great, and I like it when it poops out the risen, the risen brethren or whatever it's called, yeah. where those guys start fight at your side. So what I end up with is jumping into a new fray full of you know skeletons or whatever, landing on those guys, sending mm -hmm. bones everywhere, and then whoever's left are having to deal with those guys who are now conjured from that landing. And a brand new set of archers, and that is just the most fun thing in the world. Well, I, I so the other thing that, that that's kind of your oh shit button, right? Kind of, yeah. Can be, do you use you use that to start a fight, or do you use it when like the the boss shows up? On a boss, it's all get me out of a mess usage. Mm -hmm. But when it's just straight on, hey, there's blue mobs, or there's just stuff to kill, I just use it to start things. It kicks so, things off as fun. The other thing nice about Falling Sword is it's also a teleport to get you out of a bad stuff. Yeah, it is. Right? <laughs> yeah. So and it's better than the horse charge thing. I can't stand that one. Yeah, I haven't. I never. I saw that one and I didn't even ever try it. Not uh, a most fan. Most of them I'll at least try. I tried it. I, it's okay. And I think if some, some play styles probably really like it, but I'm just, I, I, 
that wasn't enough for me. And I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was in too many situations where I needed to get the crap out of, out of Dodge. Yeah. Um, so instead I use other defensives like the iron skin thing and, and some of that. So, so for me, I like it, especially, you know, with the tank and I also have it with the, I mean, with the barbarian and the crusader, the uh, falling sword is kind of my, it's not quite an, Oh shit button, but it's like the bad guys came. Let me wham this down because I have that flurry Yeah. with the barbarian. It's call of the ancients where my three, my three buddies show up yep. and fight for a while. Right. And I have that thing specced to be, you know, they're pretty maxed out. Stronger. I noticed they've been they're They're yeah. longer than I usually see from other barbs. Yeah. Mine is 45 seconds instead of 30. I <laughs> think guys are hanging around a long time. <laughs> and, and, the, and I have other things in my spec that reduce my cooldown. So I, I can bring them out for like almost every other fight. Yeah. Um, well, and maybe I'm, this is just psychological, but I like to have a, an Oh shit button. That's like, you know, my, my recourse when things look bad. So yeah. as soon as I see a, a, a bunch of blues with a boss, boom, I hit that button. Yeah. You got, you got to have that. I think every class has got a pretty good selection of at least combinations that can to provide a, a cumulative. Oh shit button. Yeah. Um, well, it's been a pleasure, Ralph. Always fun to talk to you. And um, yeah. we'll probably do this in the future again. Uh, any, any when I, parting, when I learned another class, any, <laughs> any parting thoughts uh, for people about barbarians or anything else? I uh, so stack life on hit and always be hitting something. You know, if you're standing around trying to go, oh, I think I might die, you should be hitting something. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. That's some yeah. fine advice. My parents never even gave me that good advice. Always be hitting something. <laughs> yes. A B H. Thanks, Ralph. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Ralph. Always good to talk to Ralphie boy. Hey, Ralphie boy. Uh, by the way, the song you're hearing right here. It's our friend Eric Van Skyhawk, who's a bit of a demon hunter professional. i to have him on sometime, maybe talk about the DH. What's the down low on the DH, yo? You'll find out when I do. Let's get to some quick emails and calls here. All right, why not? Sorry, that's a little loud. Let's turn that down. Uh, emails, calls. Let's start with an email we got here from Joe, who says, What features would you like to see added uh, to guilds? I'm sure Blizzard could add a ton, and hopefully they will. Glad you're doing a Diablo Joe uh, podcast. Thanks, Joe. I think anything Blizzard can do to improve the way the uh, clan slash guild system in the game works is a good thing. I think right now it's a great start. I was really surprised by that stuff. I hadn't really paid attention to notes leading up to the, to the expansion. And that stuff works really well. I've got a giant group of people in there that are all kind of tied into, uh, you know, our cool guild name, group name stuff. And we can get into matches real easy, find out who's playing what. Great little uh, chat system built in. But I'm sure they could do more. I mean, I'm not ready to say, hey, where's our guild housing? I want a, I want a little cottage in West March or something. Actually, I really do want a little cottage in West March, if you want to know the truth. Anyway, thanks for the email, Joe. Appreciate it. Got one here from Leo. It says, hey, Scott, have you played many hardcore characters? I'm curious what your take is on hardcore versus normal characters. Uh, again, this comes from Leo. And uh, he the, the email's a little longer. He talks a bunch about how much how much more intense it is or how there is just always this, this feeling of I, I better not screw this up. I'll say this. If you... If I'm to do the temptation to go as easy as possible on a hardcore character now would would be there for me, meaning I, I just I couldn't do a difficulty level that that would put me at risk. But there and there, here's the main reason: I think all the encounters, all the mini bosses, all the blues, yellows, and everything you got to do uh, in the acts are no big deal. It's the act bosses, especially Malthel in uh, Act Five, that I would really worry about. That is a hard fight on anything harder than. Well, I rarely beat it past hard. Let's put it that way. He really works me. So I would hate to think that I would work all that time working on that hardcore character, doing really well, watching myself, not getting in too many weird positions, to then just lose it all suddenly when I had to take on one of the bosses at the end of an act. That would be real frustrating. So 
I think it's cool. And like I said, we're going to have somebody on the show. We'll get somebody in here as a super hardcore aficionado, and we'll talk about all the ins and the outs of being a true hardcore player and what that means uh, for the game that they love. So we'll find out that, about that soon. Thanks, Leo. If you want to send us emails, you can. Show at gmail.com. Show at gmail.com. We got one phone call, and it's from someone you know. Hello. This is Deckard Kane. I'm trying to reach the Diablo show. I wanted to call and wish you luck on all your adventures, but I also wanted to address rumors that I had died. This is simply not true. In fact, the Deckard Cain that you saw killed by butterfly magic was actually a life model decoy. <laughs> I had constructed it out of a Herodric cube, a cow king heart, several healing potions, and a pair of old boots. Since then, I've been wandering around having great adventures. I'd love to tell you more about it, but you'd have to stay a while and listen. <laughs> anyway, good luck with the show. This has been Deckard Kane. It has been. Okay, look, look. I, I actually kind of know who did that. And I would just like to put out a request to this Deckard Kane. You're welcome to call anytime. I think a minute long advice from Deckard Kane each week would be a fun little moment in the show. It's entirely up to you. I'm just putting it out there. If you want in, I think I'm open to that idea. Nicely done. Uh, by the way, you can call the show. And I meant to have that number up and ready so that I could just tell you what it is. But because I'm lame, and slow. Here it is. I found it. Uh, the email address is 206-278-0553. That's 206-278-0553. If you call that number, you can leave a message right there. We'll play it on the show. Keep them short. Keep them interesting. Happy to do it. it can be your thoughts, your opinions, your questions, whatever you want. Again, the number is 206-278-0553. And as always, there's the email address, the, the Diablo Show at gmail.com. You can send your attached MP3s as well. That's going to do it, guys. Episode one in the can. We got a bunch more stuff to do uh, before the next episode to kind of get a few things uh, squared away. I got some interviews coming up and all that. And I, like I said, I got a big contest coming. So stay tuned for those. But as we lead up into that, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode or enjoy it between now and then. And if you've got feedback, thoughts, or whatever, all those contact methods I just gave you are viable ways to get a hold of me. All right. Go to the web, too. Uh, the show will be at frogpants.com slash Diablo. Links to the things we talked about and more will be there. That's frogpants.com slash Diablo. And uh, what's great about that is there are going to also be all your subscription methods there. So the iTunes link, RSS feed, all that kind of stuff will be right there for the taking. It's going to do it, man. Did I miss anything? Oh, at the, uh, sorry, at the Diablo show on Twitter or me at Scott Johnson. Either one or both. How about both? That never hurt. It's going to do it. We'll see you guys next week for another edition of the Diablo show. I love you, Scott Johnson. You're my favorite podcaster. is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there.